One of the key aspects of working in a field that involves uh, generating light and using light for applications is to realize just how many applications of lasers and how many uh, how many applications of photonics touch everyday lives. Most people don't don't they don't even think about for example how many they don't know how many times a day they use a laser that it, you can't buy things you can't make a phone call you can't do anything without actually using some aspect of photonics technology you can't store data on your computer without using photonics technology all of our work has to do with with the engineering of extremely small uh, metallic nanoparticles that capture light like antennas, like op optical frequency antennas, and then they can deliver that light energy in a very concentrated way into sp different types of applications, different types of environments. And the first one is a treatment, is a highly localized treatment for prostate cancer, which is a real breakthrough because it is so localized that it actually reduces very, very substantially reduces the side effects, which are often considered worse than the disease itself. And that, that is some work that's now in the clinic, and it's advancing almost to the end of the clinical trial. The second advance I'm going to talk about is how you can actually use light to drive chemical reactions, which is not that much of a surprise for people, but what people, not that much of a surprise for people who do um, who, who are academics, who do chemistry in the laboratory, but for people who do chemistry in a chemical plant, that's a big surprise, because they've spent the last century applying heat and pressure to try to do chemical reactions. So instead, we take Mother Nature's uh, approach and we use light, and so we could do reactions that in industry might be done in a big chemical plant at hundreds and hundreds of degrees, and we reduce them by hundreds of degrees to temperatures where you could do the same reaction in your home. You could do it in a glass or plastic container, and, but you do it with light driving the reaction instead of heat and pressure driving the reaction. So that has a lot of, um, that has a lot of important applications, and the one in particular that we have focused on is the production of hydrogen. Hydrogen is something that is, a, is part of our future. Hydrogen-driven hydrogen vehicles, hydrogen-powered vehicles, are, um, they're, they're here. We have them. Toyota has had them for a long period of time. The question is how to make hydrogen available and affordable. Right now, the cost is something like 10 times above that of, of, of gasoline, so it's not, it's not commercially effective. But we have a way with light and using the types of nanoparticles we can design to actually reduce the temperature, reduce the cost, build compact sources that can actually, when you turn them on, when you turn the light on, you make hydrogen, you turn the light off, the hydrogen uh, production ceases. So it's hydrogen on demand, we can do this with greenhouse gases, we can do this with, with, with other approaches as well. And so this is something that we think it could, could truly have a transformational impact on fields like transportation where hydrogen fuel is, is very, very much needed, but it's needed at a cost point below what conventional methods will actually uh, produce.